finally made it to Friday. Right? Remember a few weeks, two weeks, was it two weeks ago when we started John chapter 13? I said that this is Thursday. It's the beginning of um, Monday, Thursday. It's the night in the other Gospels that you get the Last Supper. Jesus washes the disciples' feet and then we have this discourse of him praying and walking with the disciples um, and then being arrested in the garden and taken before the, the Jewish high council and then finally, Friday morning, take him before Pilate. My question this morning, there's a couple things in this passage, this passage of Scripture which probably didn't even catch your eye. You, you've heard it hundreds of times, and it slipped right over your head, and it's just something that you missed. But there are details that are there and are very important to us understanding and what this passage actually means to us. The first one is right there in that very first verse. It says, that they, then they took him from Caiaphas' house to Pilate's headquarters, and it was early in the morning. Why does John have to tell us it was early in the morning? What just happened in verse 27? The cock crowed. And Val told us last week, the cock crows in the morning. So... The cock just crowed. We all know that it's morning. Why does John feel the need to tell us it was the morning? It does. We'll get to that in just a minute. Right? Today is Friday. Actually, it's Sunday, but in the reading, it's Friday. The Passover is tomorrow, and if it's Friday, what else is tomorrow? The Sabbath. So this morning is the morning of the Sabbath coming, and the day before the Passover. So the Jews can't go into his, to his house. But back to this morning thing. In John, things happen for a reason, in light and in dark. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus under the cover of darkness at night. In John chapter 4, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at a well in the middle of the day, in the bright, shining sunlight. In chapter 13, Jesus tells Judas to go and do what you must, and he leaves the meal, and he enters, and it was dark night, according to John. And in John chapter 18, Jesus goes before Pilate, and it was early morning. The rising of the sun, the light is shining. So why does a member of the Jewish High Council and a member of Jesus' own disciples do things in darkness, and those who are part of the world see Jesus in the light? These are not just coincidences. These are important details that when we don't see them or think about them, don't give us the full picture of what is happening here. We'll get to that in just a moment. Pilate. Who is Pilate? We say it every week, right? We've, as long as, how many of you are lifelong Lutherans? If you're not a lifelong Lutheran, how many of you came from another denomination that does the creeds? Right? There are some... Believe it or not, there are some denominations out there that don't use the ecumenical creeds on some mornings. So, not that that's, that's just the way that they do worship. That's not bad or, or wrong. But, you have been saying for all of your life that Jesus was crucified under... And why is this important? He's, he's not a judge. He is, well, he is a judge. But he's more than that. He's the prefect of Judea. He's the Roman prefect. He's the governor in a sense. He is the supreme ruler to use a Star Wars terminology <laughs> of that region of the world. There is no one higher than him there. Anything that he says in this part of the country goes. 
If he says that you can't drink coffee until noon, guess what? You can't drink coffee till noon. And I'm glad I don't live in any place where they say you can't drink coffee till noon. If he said this person is going to be executed, guess what? That person's executed. If he wanted to do something, he didn't ask for money. He just said, we're doing it. And it got done. The only person that Pontius Pilate answered to was the emperor who said that. The emperor. The emperor is the only person who could tell Pontius Pilate to do something and he had to do it. Understand that. That Pontius Pilate had ultimate power. Pontius Pilate did not live in Jerusalem. Pontius Pilate lived in a town called Caesarea Maritima, which is actually on the coast, which is a beautiful town, I hear. I've never actually been there. And I hear that the remains of Pontius Pilate's palace are still there, and it's a beautiful place. If you ever go, you can visit it. Um, but he didn't live in Jerusalem. So why is he in Jerusalem this day? To watch the Jews? Because the Sabbath, and what more importantly... Passover is going to happen. And what is Passover? Passover is a festival from Exodus. Remember? In Exodus, God brought the Jews out of Egypt, freed them from their slavery, and in the last of the ten plagues was the Passover. And they killed a lamb, a year old, with no blemish. They spread the blood of this lamb. They completely drained it of its blood. Spread the blood over the doorposts. And on the, length, the side portions of the door. So that the, when the spirit of death came through that town, that country, it knew not to go into those homes. Because those were homes of God's chosen people. That's why it's called the Passover. Because the spirit of death passed over those houses. And this is, so this is a celebration of freedom for the Israelites. A celebration of overturning a king and celebrating their newfound freedom through God. Now, if you were the person who had ultimate power in a region, and you knew a huge group of people within your region were going to have a celebration about overthrowing a king and celebrating their freedom, where would you be? You would be where they're going to do that. So Pontius Pilate is here because he wants to keep the... Peace. He wants to make sure that the emperor doesn't get upset with him. He wants to make sure that nothing happens that's going to upset his reign of power in this place. So he comes to this place, and the, and the religious powers bring to him a man that they want dead. Because their attempts at stoning him themselves came to no fruition. So we see Jesus before Pilate, much like we see the scene from last week where Jesus was with Caiaphas, and who was outside at the fire? Peter. Jesus and Caiaphas inside, Peter outside. This week we have Jesus and Pilate inside, the Jewish High Council outside. And the Jewish High Council is outside, I said this earlier, why? Because today is the, right, this is the morning before the Passover and the Sabbath, and if they enter into the the to the house of Pilate, they become what? Ritually unclean. Which means they cannot partake of the Passover. So they're staying outside so that they don't defile themselves. Do you get the irony there? Why are they there? Because they want to defile themselves by having a man killed who did nothing. But yet they stay outside so that they can stay ritually clean. And Pilate and Jesus have a discussion and we get to the best question ever, the question that every actor struggles with. How do you say this line? Pilate says to Jesus, when Jesus says to him, everyone who knows me follows after me and those who belong to me will know the truth. And Pilate says to Jesus, Say that again. Is that how he said it? Or did he say, what is truth? Or did he say it some other way? How is this, how is this inflected? Because you know when you read something, you read it in your mind the way that you think that it was said. 
You read it in your mind the way that you think that somebody inflected it and said it, and you know from, from your own understanding how that was meant and what, and what that person was trying to convey by that, right? Because words mean something, but said in a certain way means something else. Inflection causes an un help, a deeper understanding of what is being said. So how did Pilate ask this question of what is truth? Isn't that the question that all of us struggle with? Now we see fake news, which I'm sorry, there's no such thing as fake news. It's not true news. It's not fake. It's incorrect. Right? Because it's still news, whether or not it's true or not, whether or not it's right or not, it's still news. It's not fake. It's just incorrect. It's untrue. And what is Truth. Don't we want to know that? I mean, I could stand up here and tell you that my olive is pink, and I believe that. But is that truth? There's actually probably a pink spot on it someplace, so if you look really close, because I spilled wine at some point on it. But just because somebody tells us something doesn't mean that it's true. So when Jesus says to Pilate that for this I was born, and for this reason I came into the world. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate says, what is truth? And at that moment, he doesn't give Jesus a, a, any time to answer he walks out into the crowd and asks them what they want to do. But here's the thing we have to understand about truth. The word here for truth is found in the New Testament not that many times. And in actuality, in all of the Gospels, it's only found 32 times. Once in the Gospel of Matthew. Once is the word truth used in the Gospel of Matthew. Three times in the Gospel of Mark. Three times in the Gospel of Luke. So do your math real quick. I said 32. 25. 25 times in the Gospel of John. Because John is all about what the truth is. Right? The light is coming into the world and is full of grace and truth. And grace and truth come into the world through Jesus. People doing the truth come to the light, and everyone who belongs to the truth recognizes the shepherd and listens to his voice. True worshipers worship in spirit and truth. Those who continue in the word of Jesus are freed by the truth. They're sanctified in the truth. They are sent into the world with the spirit of truth dwelling in them. Right? John is huge on what the truth is. So what is the truth? When Pilate goes outside to the, to the Sanhedrin, to the Jewish authorities, he asks them, what do you want me to do? I don't find anything wrong with him. You need to take him to train, right? He says, I don't have any case against him, but, but during this time of your, your Passover, of your festival, I'll release one person for you, right? I'll release a prisoner for you. It is tradition, right? It says that here. This is, but this is not found anywhere else outside of the Bible. But the Jewish authorities say to him, when he says, do you want me to give you your king? They say, no, but give us Barabbas. And Barabbas was a bandit. When's the last time we heard the word bandit? John chapter 10. With the good shepherd, when the bandit comes in over the fence. Right? Jesus is the shepherd and bandits come. And steal. That's the last time we heard the word bandit. So they're putting Barabbas against Jesus. Jesus, the good shepherd. Barabbas, the bandit. Do you know the other thing that's interesting about the name Barabbas? Kirk does. He's smiling and laughing. Technically, Jesus' name would be Jesus Bar Joseph. Right? Because Bar, in, in this language, means son of. 
And what does Abba mean? Father. Barabbas is literally son of the father. So in a few days, in a few, next week actually, I think we hear them screaming, give us Barabbas, give us the son of the father. And crucify Jesus. Because it's all about truth. And what is truth? Actually, the better question is, who is truth? Did you see what Jesus said when he answered Pilate? Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. How can you belong to an inanimate thing? How can you belong to something that doesn't exist? You see, Jesus takes truth to a higher level. Because truth is not merely telling the facts that are absolute. Truth is understanding how we were made and what we were made to be. Truth is understanding that the inner being within us was, was knit together by God, as he said in Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you. Before you were even in your mother's womb, I know the plans I have for you. You are going to be a great child of mine and do wonderful things in the world. I've knit you together to do things that only you can do. And if you belong to me and stay with me, I will empower you to be in the world and to teach them everything they need to know. Because it's not about getting everything right. It's about understanding whose we are and what we were made to do. And that is to be His hands and feet in this world. To show forth His love. To stand before the authorities. To stand before people that don't understand what's happening. To stand in a place and show love to people that need to see it. Because that's what God called us to do. To testify to the truth. And who is the truth? Yeah, I'm on the cross. Jesus. I was like, did I just, did I say something here? This, Jesus is the truth, right? So who is the truth? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus calls us to listen to him and to, to follow where he leads us. Because in that, even when we scream, give us the Son of the Father, we will still get exactly what we need. Because just like Barabbas, we all get grace through what Christ did for each of us.